Uh, this is an example of a normal scapular MRI. Just wanted to show the imaging planes here. So this is the, the scout images, obviously, uh, to kind of define the region. And the scapula is larger than the field of view of the shoulder. So you, you're not going to be able to get the whole scapula on a routine shoulder coil. But you can see when you get axial images here on this T1, scapula goes all the way out to here and then it goes all the way down to here. So this is the inferior angle of the scapula and sort of the medial margin of the scapula all the way to the glenoid surface. So we want to co cover all that. In addition, what, what people are typically looking for in addition to the scapula itself are the findings between the scapula and the chest wall. So the routine thing is we got a T1 here, we've got a T1 sagittal. I say sagittal, but again, notice it's sort of oblique sagittal and it's oblique relative to the plane of the scapula, just like almost all musculoskeletal imaging. We want to be orthogonal to the planes of the structure we're imaging. So, so this sagittal is like a sagittal of a shoulder that's prescribed on the glenoid surface. And we want to just go through the whole scapula. So in this case, the real thing to prescribe is basically based on the axis of the scapula. You go all the way through, you can see here's scapula. It's very thin here. Here's the inferior tip, and we can see between the chest wall. So we have a couple of T1 sequences, and then we have a couple of stir sequences, uh, again, sagittal oblique and um, axial. Okay. Generally speaking, a coronal isn't all that helpful, so usually we just have those four sequences as part of the scapula. But again, when you see scapula, that's not a routine shoulder. That's a, a larger field of view that's dedicated to the to the structure here and the surrounding chest wall.